insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 63, Future Goals. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my visionary and gifted co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone, and I don't think you've ever called me that before. No, I came up with some good ones in these nice. next couple. So uh, We're actually starting a little bit late tonight. Uh, wah, wah, wah. Well, technical difficulties. I had some sound issues I had to work out. Yeah. Um, so this podcast is kind of, um, springboarding off of last week's Q and a session where last week we had talked about some questions or we had had some questions for you, um, regarding future goals. Uh, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to kind of expound on that a little bit. Um, and what we'll be talking about are what some of the common future goals are that, that teenagers have at your age. Okay. Um, and I'm pretty sure that running for president's not in there, so we're not going to put too much pressure on you. <laughs> Great. Um, and then we'll talk about setting goals and some hints on what parents can do to help teens um, set goals and, and achieve those goals. Uh, any questions or anything before we start? Nope. Not All that right. I know of. Well, we'll start right after this. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. So in doing my research for today's podcast, um, there were a number of sources out there that had um, dozens and dozens of different goals for teens. So I kind of pulled from several different sources and came up with a list of 20. And what I'd like to do is sort of throw these out there and, and one, see if you've considered these as goals and, and two, get your thoughts on them and, and how realistic they are and how serious these goals are to you. Okay, cool. That sounds like something I can do. Okay, good. I'm sure I have every confidence in your ability to do this. Thanks. So the first one that we have here, and you're a little young for it, but I think when I was your age, I was thinking about this, and that's learning to drive. Is that is that a goal that you have in mind? I mean, at some point, I do want to learn how to drive because I don't exactly always want to take public transportation. Um, and, um, I have my doubts, um, I can't really move around stuff too much, but, <laughs> like, we, um, we experienced that when we were moving in your desks. True, um, true. Uh, I've never been the best with coordination, and I think it's a little confusing right now, but 
Uh, so is a bunch of other things that adults do. So I definitely think that at some point I do want to learn how to drive and not just have to use public transportation or like have my friends drive me to places. And I also think it's a realistic goal because many people drive. Um, and it's definitely a pretty big goal for any teen to have because most teens don't really want to rely on other people to get to places. That is true. Now, I'm guessing you're probably a few years away from driver's ed in school at this point. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and when we get to that point, you know, we'll probably wind up getting driving lessons, you know, with a professional agency for you too, just to be safe. safe. Um, so the next thing that they have here is kind of more of a down to earth, realistic one. And that's explore your hometown. Um, when I was a kid, uh, all of my exploration happened on bicycle. You know, my friends and I would, would bike everywhere. I mean, to the point that we literally wore the tires down on our bicycles, uh, riding everywhere. It's a little bit different for you now. You don't, you don't get out to explore your the town very much you're kind of limited in in the areas that you go is there a desire or an interest to maybe explore your town more than you have i mean i've like been able to pinpoint a bunch of places but i don't think i've ever thought of actually traveling around the town one because i really don't have another um any real means of transportation except for you and mommy um or walking or walking even though you know i probably like would not do that at all yeah i can't i don't know how to ride a bike well i don't have a bike i don't have any other means of transportation so yeah and we live off of a main road so it's not the safest place to be walking yeah uh number three is one you've sort of dabbled in already um, and you, you did it mostly under the guidance of mommy at this point and that's cook an entire meal by yourself. I know you were pretty gung ho, uh, you know, this year with, uh, getting home, not having aftercare, you know, at school and stuff and wanting to cook meals and stuff. And there's a couple that you do. Um, is this something that you're interested in exploring and learning more? I mean, yeah, I actually really enjoy cooking, and um, I always enjoy helping Mommy any way I can when she's, like, making breakfast or lunch, and um, I actually had it in mind before I started middle school, like, I wanted to basically learn to make dinner for you guys because I wanted to um, help you guys out since um, you guys were coming home from a long day at work and I was already done with school so I was hoping um, I'd be able to help out in that way and I've learned to cook multiple meals and make them edible and not burn down the house so that's, that's helpful. good <laughs> <laughs> that, that makes us encourage you more when you don't burn down the house Yeah. Um, so number four is, is a very important one I, and I think most youth um, of any time period, not just youth today, kind of overlook it. And that's registering to vote. Um, do you have any interest in voting, electing politicians, or participating in the election system, political system at all? I mean, when I was younger, whenever you guys would, like, go out to vote, um... I thought I would never be able to understand politics or anything or be able to understand how to vote at all. Um, and um, Mommy always told me, well, uh, you have until you're 18 and um, then you'll learn all that stuff. But um, honestly, it, after a while, it never occurred to me that I would actually really do any of that i mean i know it's like my civil right to do that and especially since i'm a woman and we had to um and many women died for the right to vote i probably would have been i probably would want to vote even though i still don't understand really anything okay well i think an educated voter is probably um the most important kind of voter and i'm sure you'll get there by the time it's you're old enough to register to vote yeah uh, number five is learn to put together a resume. You know what a resume is? No. 
So a resume is a document that individuals use when they go for a job. And it usually tells what your training is, what your schooling is. It goes into detail about what your work experience is. And it's kind of a summary of your abilities and why you're qualified for a job. They're also called CVs or curriculum vitae. Um, when you when you tend to do them from a college perspective, but okay. it's basically you walk into a job and you fill out an application, you give them your resume, and they can look at your resume, and based on that, it helps them to determine if you're right for the job. Are you, I guess, since you haven't learned to put one together, um, do you have any desire to go out and get a job? I mean, of course, I do want to end up getting a job, and probably now I should probably think about getting a resume so that when the time does come, I would be able to hopefully um, have the people who I want to work for look at my resume and hopefully determine whether I'm good for the job or not. Yeah, and, and the resume is a living document, so it changes and evolves as you get new skills and new experiences. So it's it's always something that you're working on. Okay. Uh, number six, uh, kind of an interesting one because I think you you sort of started on that this weekend, and that is conquer one of your fears. Oh, great. So, and we all want to conquer our fears, I'm sure. So I guess the real future goal here is if you could pick one of your fears to conquer, which one would it be? Mm. Huh. Depends which one um, is what depends which one would be the most helpful. I have, I think, four main fears that I can think of right now. One of spiders, one of heights, uh, one of bees and other flying bugs from the summer and spring. And the dark. I don't know which one would be more beneficial. Okay, but you would be, you know, open to conquering one of them then. I'd want to, yeah. Okay, that's good. It depends on how much I actually want to conquer that fear and what I'll um, put up with. Absolutely. So number seven is apply for a scholarship. Now, I'm sure as you get a few grades further in and you get into high school... Um, your your ca guidance counselors are probably going to talk to you about what scholarships are available. There'll be uh, a lot of times there's a lot of um, athletic scholarships, but there's also academic scholarships as well. Um, have you investigated even a notion of where you want to go to college, where you where you would need to look for a scholarship? Uh, not exactly. No, I just know I've always. I've just known for a while I've wanted to go to college, but I never knew, like, what scholarship I wanted and where I would go. Okay, that's fair enough. It's a little early for that, but I think we're going to uh, quickly start getting to that point where we're going to be going down that path. Great. Um, I, I think it's kind of an exciting time, and you'll enjoy it, and, you know, we'll go out and we'll visit some colleges, and when you'll figure out what you want to study, and you know, what the best place is for that and so forth. So it's, it's, you'll enjoy it. Okay. Uh, number eight, I think you've got down pretty good already. And that is earn your own money. How do you, how well do you think you do with earning your own money? Well, right now I do chores and, um, you guys pay me for that. And I have a solid amount from that since I actually don't go out and spend it a lot. Well, nobody goes out much <laughs> these days. Yeah. I really don't. Um, but even before this whole thing, I never really went out to buy anything. I mean. That's true. Yeah. Um, I never. I wasn't always like that, to be honest. When I was younger, when I got, like, money for birthdays, I would, like, try. I would on. I had, like, such little money back then that I. That I think it developed into, like, okay, I shouldn't spend all my money. And then it developed into, okay, I have a lot of money. I really don't <laughs> want to spend any of it. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, when it's your money, you uh, you tend to be a, a little less willing to part with it when you earn it. Yeah. 
number nine is sort of along the same lines, uh, sticking with the whole idea of, of earning and saving money. This one is saving money for college. Have you started saving money for college yet? Um, I probably have um, enough to where I could probably start um, a separate account for like saving up for college. I know you guys have talked. Um, ha I think you guys had a small account um, for college. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping to, since um, I have, um, well, yeah. I could, I should probably, I could probably tap in as well since it's my own. Um, well, since it's your future, since right? Since it's my future, yeah, <laughs> I should tap in at some point. Speaking of which, I should actually talk to mommy afterwards to sort something out with it. Your financial advisor. Yeah, sure, she is. Uh, honestly. So number ten, halfway through the list here, number ten is go through a major hair change. Uh, I know you've dyed your hair. We haven't been dyeing it a lot recently so i wouldn't consider hair dyeing a major change yeah um i would consider a major change a significant haircut since you traditionally have long hair yep. but have you contemplated any major hair changes as a future goal honestly i have i honestly think that like after this whole quarantine thing is over i kind of want to cut my hair and dye it like a blue color i don't know why but i've just had that idea in mind for a while now Interesting. Just because, one, I don't really like having long hair anymore, and it's a pain to brush. Yeah. Um, and I just think having short hair would be easier. And I also have gotten into the color blue, and I thought having sort of bluish hair would be kind of cool. And, like, just if I ever go back to school, just, like, having my hair cut and just walking in and just having that would be died. a shocker for everyone i know like um honestly like this is basically what i wear every day to school and what i wear every day now and like just having the major hair dyeing change and just like straight off cutting most of my hair off just like uh, that would certainly be a major change yeah so uh number 11 on the list here is complete a physical milestone, like a 5K or something like that. Do you have any ambition whatsoever to do that? I know mommy is a runner. Uh, she does 5Ks. I know you participated in uh, the mile run down in Disney. And and the 5K as well. And, and the 5K as well. So is that something that you're interested in, in doing more of? Mm, not really. Not really. Okay, moving right along. Yeah, I don't really like... <laughs> I can't run that long. I'm like... Well, endurance comes with practice. I know. So if you don't do it on a regular basis, then you know you can't do it. Still, I wouldn't really want to do it. Okay, I'm not going to argue with you. Okay. Number 12 is find a younger student to mentor and help them learn the ropes of being a teen. Do you think you'd make a good mentor to someone like that? few years younger than you i mean yeah i've gone through a lot of things right now even though i'm not um even though i'm at the youngest year of being a teen um i've gone through a lot of things i've gone through mute eh. mutant <laughs> you've become a no. mutant what no i've gone through mood swings i've gone through the physical body change i've also gone through um digestive change <laughs> um <laughs> yep. i've gone through a lot of changes that a lot of teens go through um, mainly relating to the body and such. I'm not going to get into details anymore. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's and fine. Also, I have some tactics for stress relievers and such. So I definitely think I could, um, mentor someone younger than me. Okay. Good answer. Uh, number 13, actively or become active in community service projects. Um, you don't really do much community service now. Uh, we've talked about this as kind of being a requirement moving into the college um, admission stuff. What would your ideal community service project be if you decided to do one? I really don't know exactly um, all the ideas for it, but in a way I do plan to hopefully in a way have something to help with the community i don't know exactly what would it be but i just know i want to at some point um get some community service and help out the community in a way okay 
Well, I mean, there's a lot of different options out there. Um, your brother Sam, he worked for a food bank once a month, and among other things that he did. Um, and uh, I'm sure, you know, school could certainly point you in the right direction as to um, if you want to volunteer for things. And uh, Mommy and Daddy would be more than happy to support you through that, too. Okay, and I think it's a great thing. Thanks. Question 14, or, or goal 14, I should say. Kind of an obvious one. Do you plan on graduating? Yes, I do. <laughs> I've, I've said this before in the last one, and I think I've said it multiple times. In the, I think I've said it a few times in the podcasts that we've done. So... You're a pretty good student. Do you have any concerns moving through your current school and then high school and graduating? Are there any concerns or issues that you have? I think I'm good academically, but socially and with clubs and such, I'm kind of lacking. Okay. Because I wasn't able to join any of the clubs um, in middle in this year, and I really am not that social. I prefer to avoid people if I can. Right. Um, but, so yeah, that's probably something I need to work on. Um, okay. Well, it's certainly a good area to improve on. Yep. Um, question 15. Now, this one could, could go several different directions, and that's travel abroad. Uh, and I think in the spirit of this question, it's to a different country. Um, a lot of times it's traveling to Europe or Asia or something like that. Um, a lot of times it has to do with school or college where you're studying abroad. Um, sometimes it's, you know, when you reach the age of 18 or older and you're traveling on your own at that point in time, sometimes that could be your destination uh, for vacation or, or pleasure or even business. So do you have any interest in traveling to um, another country? Um, I mean, I've had a few interests. I mean, Europe is a, is a pretty good place. I'd like to try. And their song that. Final Countdown is awesome. Really? <laughs> you talk about the band, not the actual country, Daddy. Yes, I know, sweetie. But yeah, um, at some point I do want to try and travel to either Europe or Asia just to experience the... Asia's got some pretty good songs too, by the way. Seriously. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway. But so, yes, you do want to travel. At some point, yes. Okay. Um, get your first job. Yes. What would your first job be, if you could pick it? Um... Hmm. Well, I'd probably kind of want to work in retail. Okay. Um, the only real reason is because um, I think at some point everyone might want to, like, try working at retail just to, like, maybe gain social skills and learn how to cook more um, in a way. I agree. I think everyone should suffer through retail at some point in time <laughs> in their life. It gives you much more appreciation for, for a professional career. Yeah. Uh, let's see. 17. Learn another language. Uh, you, t you took Spanish in school, right? Yeah. Uh, do you think you're fluent in Spanish? Um, I can say a few sentences for, like, greetings, and I can talk about, like, if I need anything in class. But so far, it's um, I'm not really fluent in Spanish. I can... I know um, a lot of Spanish words now, but I can't, like, go... I can't say, like, full-on paragraphs or essays of, um, in Spanish. So if there was a language that you could pick to learn and study and become fluent in, would it be Spanish or would it be something else? Mm, I guess maybe Spanish or Hebrew. Hebrew, okay. Two very different languages, by the way. I know. Uh, let's see, 18. Uh, this one actually harkens back to an earlier podcast uh, when we had Dan Fuchs from The Financial Fix on. Uh, start your first investment account. Now, you're a little young for that right now, uh, but is there any interest that you have in doing that and starting uh, to grow your personal wealth like we talked about? Um, 
I guess in a way, yes, it'll be like um, a separate account to where um, I'm able to save up money um, and um, I guess it's just like uh, um, like a goal that I set aside and if I ever have any like spare money or anything, I'll just put it separate, like stuff like that for like something special, I guess. Okay. Well, and, and I'm sure we'll get to that investment side of things in time. Yep. Uh, 19 and 20. I actually want to flip these around a little. I'm going to ask you 20 first. Okay. And that is, do you have any future goals for learning a new hobby or a skill? Um, mm, mm. Like, would you like to learn how to crochet like mommy? Or knit like Gma, Or... I don't know, do computer stuff like I do. I mean, in a way, yes. Um, I do want to do a few more stuff with computers, like with coding and such. Mm -hmm. um, I actually just finished up my skills class in um, school, and I learned a lot about um, computer coding and how to create um, um, pixel, pic pixel characters and okay. different stuff like that i also want to try and see if i can make different outfits like you actually mentioned before i could end up becoming a fashion designer in a way because um, yeah. of my detailed outfit drawings for my characters when i draw absolutely i think that'd be a good thing to pursue the last one that we had here is kind of the the big one which is why i wanted to save it to last do you have a future goal of living on your own and if so, how do you envision that? Well, I don't want to live totally alone. Um, although I don't like people, I don't want to live totally alone. I don't like, well, I don't like social life. I don't like talking with people who I don't know. Okay. Oh, okay, but that's better. Um, so you'd like a roommate maybe? Um, well, probably in like college, if I have to stay in the dorm, I'd be okay with a roommate as long as they were, they didn't hate me. Um, so basically, as long as they weren't annoying. Basically. I think that's kind of the requirement everyone has for their roommate. Yeah, um, but when I do eventually move out into my own place, I don't want to live alone. I mean, I probably wouldn't have, um, I might, I don't know if I would live with a friend or not. I mean. Just it, a whole bunch of cats, be a crazy cat lady? No, I'll have like one or two, okay? Okay, that's safe. And um, I think I said this. I said this multiple times before. I might even want to um, adopt a child, um, just to I don't know. And generally, they live with you when you adopt them. I so. know, I know. <laughs> so I don't want to live totally alone. Understood. Well, that was all I had. Uh, just kind of interesting talking what some of these future goals might look like for you. Uh, we'll come back and we'll talk about some helpful hints on setting goals and following through. Okay. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. So setting goals, I, I think it's kind of important to set them, but I think it's even more important to follow through on them. Before we go into the six strategies that I have here, um, there was some statistics that I Yay. came across here. Um, so from the, the same place I got the strategies from, 
There's a website called sevenmindsets.com. They say that only about 20% of the population sets goals. Wow. Which is, I was shocked that it was that low. What was even more shocking was that nearly 92% of those goals are never achieved. Wow. So it's difficult, obviously, for people to set goals. It's even more difficult for them to follow through on them. So that's where these six strategies come from, where it's kind of important. And it's not just the individual. It's not just on you as the person who's setting the goals to follow through. You have a support group, you know, your family, your friends, the people that care about you. It's everyone's responsibility to to help you to meet those goals. So the first of the six strategies that they talk about is it must be on your terms. And what they mean by this is the most important thing to remember is they're your goals. They're not my goals. They're not mommy's goals. So they're your goals. So one of the biggest mistakes a lot of parents make is wanting their children to live in our images, you know, live like we do and um, align your definition of success along with ours. And that probably is not the best way to go about it because success to you is very different than success to mommy and I. Um, So when you're trying to set your own goals and mommy and daddy are trying to help you, it's really our place to encourage you, to support you, and maybe steer you back on track if you if you lose track there. Um, how do you think mommy and daddy have been done, have been so far as you know with the goals that you've had so far? Do you think we've kind of adhered to that philosophy? I mean, yeah, you guys definitely never um, pushed your ideas of success and um, future goals onto me, and you've always been, um, and you've never been reluctant to hear any of my goals, and in uh, many ways, you've tried to help me achieve those goals, and I definitely thank you for that, um, and have, and letting me have my freedom and what I want um, my future to be like. Excellent. Well, I'm glad to hear that. The next one they talk about here is connect their goals to the ultimate currency, that currency being happiness. Uh, What we as parents want for our children is happiness uh, on your terms, not happiness on our terms. A lot of parents tend to guilt their kids into doing things that they want that makes the parents happy, and ultimately the kids are miserable with that. Um, But ultimately... Your happiness is defined by you. Is it financial success? Is it having fun? Uh, Or is it something deeper than that? Is it a sense of pride in in doing what you're doing? Um, You know, for instance, you could decide that instead of going to college and pursuing a career as a, I don't know, doctor, lawyer, whatever is considered successful, making lots of money, maybe you decide that that you're going to go dedicate your life to charity and you're going to go help others. And that's what makes you happy, but you don't get rich off of it. At that point in time, that happiness is how you describe it. Like what, what makes you happy? What do you see doing, uh, from a career in the future that would make you ultimately happy? Well, in a way, um, I kind of want to bring my career into my to my creative aspect. Um, as you said before, being like an interior decorator or an architect or something like that would um, be a pretty good one for my creative aspect. And of and I would have like a side um, thing where I'd be an author and write books where um, I could just uh get my love of writing and then for a hobby i just do um i just draw and create um different pieces of art so so as long as you're expressing your artistic side you're happy is what it sounds like yeah see and that's that's certainly something that that you can make a living at you know if if your idea of being happy can't earn you money then you're still gonna have to get a job but you can still do what makes you happy 
Um, I'm fortunate. I love technology. I love working with computers. And I've spent the last 20 plus years working in that field. And I've been extremely fortunate that I get to do what I love. So it's not a job. It's like I'm getting paid to do my hobby, basically. Yeah. Um, and, and I hope everyone can, can have a situation like that, but that's not always the case. Yeah. So number three is help them frame their lives. Um, they say in this study that we asked students to share their dreams and almost invariably they focus on planned professions from athletics to music, to medicine, to law. Um, because of the intrinsic nature of our society, it's easy to get very narrow with our vision for life and lose sight of some crucial components to our happiness. One of the first things you want to do is help your teens frame their lives. And it sounds like you've got a pretty good idea of what makes you happy and how you can make a living doing that in some form. Um, and I think that's one thing that parents can do out there. You know, find what your kids love, find what they're good at, and then find you know, kind of nudge them like, like you like drawing and you like drawing characters in different outfits. Okay. Well, there's a direct correlation between that and fashion. You know, you like building things and you like art. So there's a direct correlation to architect from the engineering and artistic side of things. So you're fortunate in that the things that interest you we can draw those parallels very easily. Um, do you think there are other things that you would be interested in doing that might fall outside of these couple of examples? Um, hmm. Like you said you enjoyed cooking. Is that something you'd, you might want to do? I mean, maybe. Like, I, maybe I could take my creative art aspect my like construction aspect and my love of cooking and combined it to make like all sorts of different cool meals and maybe even go into the baking um, side of things and start um, making different pastries and that is like, a good one and like when we were at Disney the one time and we had the cookies and um, the uh, uh, frosting I basically yeah. did cookie art yep. and yeah. I could probably like I could probably do something like that where I could like decorate different pastries or just make all sorts of cool different um tasty meals. Yeah, that's another great way to express your your art and your love of cooking. Um number 4 is teach them to dream big but play small. Um the study goes on to say that that they see goals uh as more critical steps as we take our path and uh Take on the path to our dreams. Um, the things we measure most often improve in our lives, so we must help teens set goals that are specific and measurable. Um, so it's, I, I guess the philosophy here is, it's nice to want to be a famous architect, but how do we get there? So let's look at those different steps to get there. Yeah, it's basically like... You um, set this big goal, which is basically a mountain, but there are different ledges to where you set smaller goals to help you achieve, to help you eventually achieve your bigger goal. And as you reach those, you achieve, um, you go up higher on the mountain, and at some point, um, however many years it takes you, you'll reach that goal. Yeah, that's exactly it. Now, number five does say that you know you need to take stock along the way so as you're moving through these steps to get to a certain goal you need to r realize you know is this really what i want to do um t uh, college years are great for this because a lot of kids get out of high school with this idea that they want to do something or be something they go to college for those courses and after the, a year or two of taking them they realize that's really not what they want to do and they'll change their majors, you know, in the middle of, of a four-year program. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, in fact, it's better that you do that than to continue to barrel through the remaining couple of years you have in college and then wind up with a degree in something you don't want to do. Um, 
So is there anything that you do now, like as far as your hobbies go, is there anything that you do at this point in time that makes you stop and, and step back and take stock of whether or not this is something that you enjoy doing or want to continue to do or do differently maybe? Um, hmm. Even with school projects, like if you start doing school projects and you've got a long project that's several weeks long, do you stop along the way there and evaluate your progress and it, whether or not you're doing the right doing it the right way? Yeah, I've done that a couple times. Okay. It's that that's just another thing that anytime you do this type of thing, like for instance, you know, I've got a couple of major projects going on at work right now, and every two weeks with this one project that's a six month long project, every two weeks we sit down and we review where we are on the project and make sure that we're meeting our deliverables. Uh, you know, making sure that we're not getting off track, making sure that the budget's on. So it's important to, to stop periodically rather than just try to barrel through to get it done. Um, and the last thing that they will talk about here is make goal setting as engaging as possible. They say we all know that when working with teens, we're competing with a constant barrage of distractions. Uh, video games, social media, uh, the opposite sex, etc. The process is predicated on patience and self-discipline, but we need to change it up a bit sometimes to help get that process started. And this kind of speaks to the motivation. You know, we did our motivation podcast a few weeks ago. Um, parents who are trying to help teens reach their goals need to find creative ways to get them engaged in pursuing those goals. Uh, a podcast, for instance, <laughs> or going out and seeing some, like for instance, if we're talking career wise, okay, maybe it might be worthwhile to go to like the Art Institute of Philadelphia and do a lecture tour there or something like that and sit in and see what it looks like to do these things or to talk to somebody in the field of work that you're trying to do. And get some advice from them and, and how hard it was and what some of the pitfalls were. Um, things like that help to keep you focused on what you're doing and, and keep you grounded but still moving forward on your paths. Um, what do you do at this point in time when you find your attention is wavering? Say you're working on a school project and you can't focus. What do you do to, to stay engaged in that and, and keep your focus on it? Well, what I try and do is, well, most of the time when I'm distracted, it's when I'm a little stressed out. So what I do is I decide to take a quick five-minute break, get my mind um, cleared, and then I go right back to work. Okay. And that's, I think that's a, a solid technique. So that was all we had today. I just wanted to give some hints out there to some of the parents that are trying to help our kids manage their future goals. And, you know, given the circumstances we're all under right now, uh, I think it's it's more important than ever to, to keep focused on the future. You know, things are kind of messed up right now. You know, nobody knows what's going to happen next week or a month from now. But the future's still there, and I, and I think if we don't continue to focus on the future and plan for it and know how to handle it, once all this stuff sort of clears up here with COVID, you know, we're we got to be ready to to continue moving forward. You know, the the world will continue to spin on kind of mindset. Yep. So we'll come back real quick and uh, get your closing remarks and any shout outs that you have. Go for closing remarks. Alrighty, so to everyone in the audience, um, I just want to say that it's always going to be important to set goals. Um, um, and the reason for it is to sort of have a meaning for doing something and have a passion to do something and try new things. Um, uh, I just think that setting goals is important for 
many different reasons, including the ones I just listed, and um, having ideas of what you're going to do in the future. Granted, they may not be the ones that you initially do, but, you know, everything changes. Okay, very good. You know, and, and sort of the, to emphasize or reemphasize that, I think one of the reasons we set goals is so we can have achievements, you know, because if we didn't have a goal, you, you don't, you know, everyone reaches for that brass ring, you know, philosophically, mm -hmm. you know, everyone w likes to f have this sense of achievement and fulfillment. Well, you can't have that without a goal. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, without goals, you're just sort of barreling on aimlessly day to day. Yeah. But, you know, if my goal is to lose 20 pounds and I get there, I get that achievement. If my goal is to learn a new language or to get that new job or or whatever it is, you know, you set realistic goals and you achieve those goals. And ultimately, that's what inspires people to, to continue going on. And it makes you want to do more and get better and improve your state and everything. Yeah. So anyway, that was all we have for this week. Um, thank you for taking the time to sit with me Thank madison you for having me uh before we go uh it's worthwhile to ask everyone to subscribe to us on uh apple podcasts google Podcasts, stitcher spotify uh all your major podcast applications you can email us at comments at insights into things.com you can visit us on twitter at insights underscore things our videos are available on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. You can hit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. Uh, we are on the web at insights into things.com. Our audio podcasts are available at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. And we stream live on Twitch five days, six days a week uh, at twitch.tv slash insights into things. And you. And don't forget to look at our other two podcasts, Insights in the Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights in the Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and Sam. Which, hopefully, we should be shooting again. That's kind of been on hiatus because of the COVID scare. Yep. Um, that's it for today. Alrighty, bye, everyone. We're done. Bye.